Lord Van Zeeks. What of Dr. Scythe? She opened up her mouth and there was a snake in there. And then a smaller snake came out of that snake's mouth. This went on for several hours. <laughs> Order! 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 Can this possibly be true? Have you been taking me for a fool? It was you, was it? You killed him. Is he mad because he's like, no, I wanted to kill him? Uh -huh. He might be. You hoped that by admitting to being accomplice in Mr. Drebber's scheme, the trial would end before you were accused of a far worse crime. Cold-blooded murder. <laughs> Oh, do shut up! I love up. that everybody in this case is like, I can slam the tables too! <laughs> uh-huh. You're so desperate now, you're making all this up. As if I would do something like that. Ooh! I assure you, the defense is not desperate, Doctor. That's true, we Mr. Narahodo, mm -hmm. Mr. Narahodo has established the facts using evidence and logic alone. Ha! <laughs> logic! Don't make me laugh. Sadly, your logic has a gaping hole in it, which I love to eat. What? What do you mean? <laughs> I'd have thought it was obvious. A motive, boy. You're lacking a motive. What possible reason would I have to kill Mr. Ass? You were still being blackmailed. What are you talking about? Assman was involved in any number of criminal activities, from coercion to theft to murder. But there is no known connection to Dr. Scythe. There. Am I crazy? Like, she's still being blackmailed, like. Right, yeah, the, the whole point is she still has to die for the blackmail yeah. work. Uh, I'm rather relieved to say it does seem somewhat. Oh, oh, we had it ready, folks. True, there's no obvious motive. But there's still something in the back of my mind. I feel sure I've seen something somewhere that hints at why the coroner might have done this. Yes, I might have tampered with the crime scene and concocted a fake report. But murdering someone for no reason is a very different story. No, when you question what, what what possible reason you could have have, no, when you question what possible reason you could have for wanting to kill Mr. Assman, something did come to mind. What? I don't even know where he's going with this. What was it, Counsel? Enlighten the court at once. <sighs> yes. We saw it yesterday, didn't we? Something that seems strange, we had no reason to suspect it at the time. There's a particular object that explains why Dr. Scythe would have wanted to kill Mr. Assman. What? Why are the scalpels on here? <laughs> I mean, she bought a bunch of scalpels, but that can't be relevant, Do we ha can Are it? they in our court record? Like... No. No. No, I don't think so. <laughs> what? Uh. Why she wanted to kill Odie Ass Man? <laughs> Everybody in the chat saying cook. Also, like, none of these are reasons why she... Uh, uh can you go to history? Uh, is it the, is it the mask? I mean, he said Someone we saw it saw yesterday. Yes. Yesterday. Which is, I'm assuming the, is the investigation, which is why I'm like, okay, the scalpels are on here, but I don't understand why. But, or, but, uh, also, were those yesterday or the day before? Uh, I think it was yesterday's investigation, which was after the trial section yesterday. <laughs> before today's trial. 
chat just keeps saying cook, and I don't know how that's going to help us. That explains why Dr. Scythe would have wanted to kill Mr. Assman. Uh, is it because... The, the only thing I can think of is it's the mask, and it's because he knows the identity of the the professor because of... He doesn't, but she does. Presumably. Well, well... <sighs> I mean, again, yeah, the mask by far makes the most sense, but again, I, I argue not. Yeah, I don't think any of them. Well, no, but he's, yeah, but well, but well, no, because he was wearing, again, it still, it still boggles me that he was wearing the mask when he was put in the grave. Like, that, that still is not registering in my head. Uh... Because I'm like, does the screwdriver have anything to do with it? I can't imagine. No, the screwdriver is. The I most... mean, look, look at the screw, look at the screwdriver real quick. It's nothing. It's in the grill. No, it's very destructive. The grill. It's just shaped like an A. It's fun. Has blood in on. Uh, yeah, has blood uh, on it. Um. I mean, the mask is the mask. This is still not a mask as well as exhibit. And then where was it found? I mean, it's on the it's on the the waxwork still. It was found at Enoch Drevers. Yeah, it was found in the balloon. So he found the mask in the balloon. I I mean, it's the thing where like I'm I'm certain it's the fucking scalpels. I just don't understand why. You think it's the scalpels? I do. I just don't know why. Chat's right. We do have three tries. We can just guess. Yeah. I just don't. <laughs> I mean, you can try the scalpels. She, she I just needed don't to, get. She needed, to, she needed ass man's money to afford her scalpel addiction. Yeah. Chat. Several people are straight up giving the answer. Please do not do that. That is not what we're, you know, come on. It's a scalpel, or rather, scalpels plural. Did you say scalpels? Uh. It would appear that the word has struck a chord, Doctor. You, come on, out with it. Yeah, out with it. I want to know. It was yesterday when we visited your laboratory. Laboratory. Look at this big, thick book here. Ah, it appears to be an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team spending. Yeah, I remember I they spent a shit ton of money on scalpels, but how does this tie back to Ass Man? Oh? What is it? It's clear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? Oh, was she, like... <sighs> Is it like she was paying him and she was writing scalpels as, an, as a business expense to cover up that she was giving him money or something and the scalpels was just there weren't it, it was, wasn't actually yeah. 500 scalpels it was just i mean that's a, a payment ter <laughs> terrible move to falsify a ledger for something silly like that i mean they're buying 500 scalpels every month i mean you might be right though. i think that's it but like i get that od Aspen was a criminal but like damn y'all how the fuck were we supposed to get that Five hundred scalpels a month? At first, I wondered what on earth you could be using that many scalpels for. But actually, I realize now it's not the scalpels themselves that are significant. It's the money for them, disappearing every month from the department's accounts. Assman's criminal organization relied heavily on extortion for its funding. 
tracing the money from the forensic investigation team's account to find where it was going would be extremely straightforward. Uh, uh. Ten years ago, when Mr. Assman was still a journalist and wrote this article about Mr. Drebber, he may well have stumbled upon information as he was researching the story. Information relating to Dr. Scythe's darkest secret that he would use to rack money from her for the next decade. So, so he also so knew he just about like, this, and he was also so, blackmailing her. So, so he just found out somehow? Well, he was... He was... He knew about it because what's his fault? Yeah, but how did he? How did he know about? How did he know about her? Well, he knew that she was the coroner, right? So this. Oh, just keep. So reading. he knew. Yeah, I don't really get it, but sure. Her darkest secret. Good lord! You mean? I don't know what happened on the night of that execution ten years ago. But clearly, the opportunity to rid yourself of that menace was too tempting to pass up. So in the end, you weren't coerced at all, were you? You did it entirely of your own free will. You stabbed Mr. Assman in the heart with all your might to silence the blackmailer who knew your dark secret forever! You'll never understand. None of you. What we've had to keep covered up all these long years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right, I don't. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool story, bro. <laughs> you're, not, you're not wrong. I have no idea. As very little of the machine remains after it was ripped apart by the bomb. The truth of this case can never properly, can never be properly established unless you speak out. And if you decide not to, it's very possible that Courtney Scythe will escape punishment for her crimes. Please, sir, own up to what you've done and tell the court the truth about what happened. Ten years ago, you told the truth, and you were robbed of a bright and successful future as a result. I can certainly understand your bitterness and your consternation now. However, this is surely the chance you've been waiting for, to sever the hold that fates had over you all these years. Super high voltage, instantaneous kinesis. I mean, really. <gasps> it's the addle brained mock scientists that are the worst, you know. What? The real villain of this case is Hairbrain, <laughs> after all. They don't recognize the fact that they don't have talent. They can't even get that right. Damn, it's so brutal. <laughs> and so they end up chasing impossible dreams, having unbridled faith in their abilities. They go on and on about their wonderful hypotheses, their stupid eyes shining like a little child's. They make me sick. I can't abide their foolishness. Careful, Mr. Trepper. We don't appreciate meanness in this court. <laughs> and you're being I... kind of a dick about <laughs> stuff. Am I going to have to have you put a thruppence in the swear jar? <laughs> I was particularly pleased with the kinesis machine. 
It made for quite a show, didn't it? So you admit it? You admit that it was nothing more than a sham made for the purpose of killing the victim? Yes, I admit it. I did it all in the name of revenge. Revenge for the future that Assman's article had deprived you of ten years earlier. The revenge you sought didn't stop at Assman, did it? Which is where that very particular waxwork comes in. Yes, I see. The condemned, vic the condemned convict that you saw rising from the grave in Lowgate Cemetery ten years ago. If your account of those events was all true... Then obviously Scotland Yard couldn't afford to acknowledge what had happened. Even if it meant discrediting a bright young man and crushing any future career he might have had. So your plan required that you abduct that particular waxwork model in order to exact your revenge on Scotland Yard as well. Or on Dr. Scythe, to be precise. It was a year ago. By some extraordinary twist of fate, Assman turned up at my workshop. He didn't even remember who I was, of course. He just wanted to employ my services as an engineer. Okay, that was my other question. It's like, how did he not know that this was the guy he fucked over? <laughs> and he happened to have a paper with him. An article on the front page caught my eye about the coroner who'd handled that bogus autopsy being appointed head of a new forensic team. When I learnt that news, my cognitive processes started to devise the plan. What a horrid tale. He robbed me of my future. So I wanted to use the man's own wiles against him for revenge. And have that rotten Scotland Yard eating out of my hand at the same time. I wanted them all to suffer the same humiliation I'd had to suffer. I think Kazuma's been sleeping this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, partner, sorry. Partner, partner, What's going partner. on? Oh my god, I just had the wildest cake? dream. I was on a boat, and I tripped on a cat. <laughs> I was smuggling my boyfriend to a different country for some reason. Wait, am I gay? <laughs> <laughs> I had a dream that I was gay. <laughs> if, you gay <laughs> if you gay in the dream, you gay in real life. <laughs> <laughs> your actions against those who ruined the future were justified as revenge at least to yourself certainly no one has the right to destroy another's prospects especially for purely selfish gain and yet in carrying out your plan you did, ex you did exactly that to someone else didn't you did I? Yes, like, think about it for two seconds, dog. Professor Hairbrain's only crime was passion for his hypothesis. Yeah, but Hairbrain's a bad scientist. You didn't ruin a bright future. He's dumb. But you had no compunction about <laughs> sacrificing his future to affect your revenge. What future? The dude was going to present a bogus experiment on teleportation. He was going to nuke his own future by being a bad scientist. You knew that he would forever be branded a failure and a fraud. He was gonna- that was gonna happen anyway! <laughs> Perhaps life treated you unfairly ten years ago, and others' misconduct left your life in tatters. But remember this. Your own actions resulted in exactly the same thing for another perfectly innocent young man! Yeah, getting him accused of murder, that's bad. 
I. I. Oops, I my don't bee. care. <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks, what of Dr. Scythe? An immediate she released a bunch of her... snakes out of her coat and ran away. <laughs> we oh, it's a we are currently trying to wrangle all the snakes. <laughs> like, it's a shocking amount of snakes. She said she opened. She said something about getting into her perfect body and Sasuke. I, mm. I don't know. <laughs> She opened up her mouth, and there was a snake in there. And then a smaller snake came out of that snake's mouth. This went on for several hours. A real Ouroboros type of thing. <laughs> An immediate warrant for her arrest has been granted, and she's been remanded in custody, my lord. I presume she will face trial in the coming days, along with Mr. Trevor. The most regrettable situation indeed. She's made great contributions to her profession over the years. It really is a hard truth to swallow. However, that is a topic for some future occasion. Isn't it, Mr. Norahodo? <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanted to find the truth. For now... Well, next Professor... time remember, when you want to find truth, <laughs> sometimes it inconveniences people. Sometimes... That was quite the inconvenient truth. Oh, full circle. Uh, for now, Professor Hairbrain. <laughs> forgot you were here. Oh, um, yes. It seems there was a great deal more to your experiment than you realized. However, I think we can assume now that you're actually an idiot <laughs> and you aren't good at science. <laughs> that all but you're, the s you're an idiot, but you're not a murderer. You're an innocent idiot. <laughs> an in an innocent idiot. <laughs> Idiots, idiots. I don't know, I got a million of them. I'll workshop, I'll yeah, workshop yeah, yeah, it. Okay. <laughs> I think we could assume now that all the sordid details have been brought to light. This has been a very long and profound trial, but I'm pleased to say you are absolved of all guilt. This whole experience has taught me a very great but painful lesson. I've... I've been... I mean, me, this dedicated scientist, this, this devotee of natural philosophy. I've been selfish and self-centered, and above all, a fool. Professor? I've spent my life thinking about nothing but my research. Misguidedly believing that I could do whatever I set my mind to, despite my lack of talent. And the worst of it is, in the process, I've caused others pain and misery. Others who are far, far greater people than I. No, Professor. That's not true. What? It's more than that. They are light years ahead of you. They are far greater than you by leagues unfathomable. That was all. Continue. Don't tie yourself with the same brush as Drebber. What happened was his doing and his alone. This outcome is his fate, not yours. You're not to blame in any way. Lord Van Zeeks, you like this guy? What? No. Uh, blush. And the derision with which he referred to you earlier, calling you a fool, talentless even. Yeah? <laughs> the man has no idea. 
of just how talent of just how talent. Yeah. yeah. You're far, believe. you're far more talentless than you could ever imagine. God damn it. You are cute though. <laughs> You have less talent in your little finger. We need finger. to finish the case. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> to believe in yourself and work your fingers to the bone to realize your dreams. That's laudable, not laughable. No one has the right to deride another for such choices. Oh. Thank you, Barak. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do you ship it? <laughs> yes, my lord. <laughs> yes, my lord. It is this court's expectation that you find the defendant not guilty of the charge of which he stands accused. I presume there are no objections? None from me, my lord. Certainly not. This trial has really made me think, but this is the right decision. Think about what? Magic. <laughs> what else? It's all been proven methodically and rigorously. I have no misgivings whatsoever. Corn. Mm, what's that? He's done it, is he? It's all over. That I was, don't know. That what's wasn't become anything. Of, <laughs> I don't know what's become of the yard these days. I don't recognize the place. Well, even though. Not all of those were related <laughs> very well. In that case, I hereby pronounce the defendant gay. <laughs> <laughs> People are saying hot milky. I hereby pronounce the defendant hot milky. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Court is adjourned. Oh, thank God. Now, how long is the post trial? It's over. That was some trial. <laughs> Professor, what a splendid outcome, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. Congratulations, Professor Hairbrain. Mr. Norohodo. Miss Susato. I'm truly, truly... Can't read. Beside myself with gratitude! How could I ever thank you enough? I'm just glad it's been all cleared up. Yeah, okay, okay, you lost West for a second. I was really like, oh no, oh no, what a bad time. Yeah, I don't know what okay, happened. Okay, well, you're back. Okay. <laughs> right now, you know, if I had that research grant money... No! Oh, I'd give the whole lot to you! Every penny! Wait, but, but you can pay me though, right? No! Well, that's very kind, but... I'm just a student, so you don't take money? Like, what the fuck, Ryan? We don't need any financial support. Susato, shut the fuck up! Your acquittal is more no, than No, it's enough. not! I mean, I mean, we probably do get a stipend as a student. That is pro- That actually could be true. Oh dear. Oh, what can I do? Aha! How about this? As a memento, it's how I was diddled and fiddled. God damn <laughs> the it. The paper about my hypothesis is inside. I love that it's a really tiny book that says science and has a rocket on it. That's incredible. That's all you need to know. I play science That's in attack science mode. In well, just as a memento then, I'm not going to read it. Thank you. 
I've been wondering, Professor. What are you going to do now? Oh! Oh my! Yes, what am I going to do? My hypothesis and my great machine lie in ruins! But still, it's been too long since I last saw... since I was last in London, so perhaps I'll enjoy some sightseeing. I must explore the great exhibition whilst I'm here too, and see if new inspiration hits me! Oh yes, that's a wonderful idea! I... I can't allow that! Oh, hey. <clears throat> Lord Van Zeeks! What are you doing in here? This is my side! Beric! I'm sorry you had to go through that, Albert. Well, if I'm honest, it, it was terrifying! You were like a great demon! You were like a great demon behind your bench there, snarling down on your prey. You're one of the few f true friends I have. I couldn't leave it to anybody else to handle the prosecution. Or the defense. Thanks? Sorry? Or the defense? Did, did I just hear that right? I always knew that you had my best interests at heart. Don't worry. Ah, how about you show me around while I'm here in town? It's been a long time since we left university. We have a lot to catch up on. Listen, Albert. If you want to have day... a date night, we can do that. <laughs> in a few days, your acquittal will be made official. When that happens, you must head straight to Dover. I'll accompany the you. The Cliffs of Dover? Oh! He knows something get out about the, the Reaper of the Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's spooky. What? I have From to there. kill everyone who gets acquitted. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't, don't want to have to kill I have you, a so. reputation to <laughs> upkeep, so... <laughs> you better get out or I will have to kill you. Sorry, no exceptions. From there, you'll cross the channel and make your way back to Germany. I've already purchased the tickets. But... but no! Hold on a minute, Barak! What about the Great Exhibition? This is the chance of a lifetime for me. I want to look around. No. No sightseeing, Albert. Give up on the idea. Oh. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see any warmth in those eyes, Barrack. Um, Lord Van Zeeks. What's all this about? A necessary precaution. Yes, I... I think I understand. Susato, what the fuck do you know? You do? Well, Iris told me that when you met with Lord Van Zeeks at his office some days ago, he asked how Mr. Notsumi was doing. Yes, that's right. I do remember being surprised at the time and thinking it was nice of him to ask. The point is, Mr. Notsumi is still alive and well. Even though... It's been more than six months now since he stood trial with the Reaper as the prosecutor. Ah, oh, you... you mean the Reaper's influence doesn't stretch overseas? Those in the Reaper's sights meet their ends, days or sometimes months after their acquittal. That's been the pattern up to now. Is Gina okay still? Like... But of course, we know that both Mr. Natsumi and Gina were completely innocent. True. And perhaps that governs the Reaper's actions. The truly innocent are spared. But I don't want to take any chances with a close personal friend. How oh, kind of dickish, dude. B B Beric. Like randos. If there is a curse, I'll let randos <laughs> die. Don't care. Like the moustached Nipponese, 
And this man should leave the country without a delay. That's why I'm packing him off to Germany at once. Right. Does your friend shaped... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hairbrain's friendship. Is that a friend-shaped package in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? He's <laughs> just happy to see me. Does your friend-shaped package why, get any sense? Why, yes, I am, actually. <laughs> You're my friend. <laughs> Goodness. Was this your intention all along, then, Lord Van Zeeks? <clears throat> in court, when people think of him as the Reaper, this man seems absolutely merciless. And yet... Sometimes I- He can be nice to one whole person. <laughs> Incredible. Sometimes I- Truly a hero. Sometimes I feel as though I don't understand him at all. It's time to go, Albert. Back to the prison for the time being. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Uh, well then, Mr. Narahodo. <sighs> Thank you so much for everything! Not at all, Professor. It was a pleasure getting to know you. Best wishes, Professor Hairbrain. Well, once the dust has settled, you must come and visit me in Germany. Anyway, goodbye for now! Oh, thank God. Now... My Nipponese friend. Oh, yes! I thought you'd gone too. We have, we have matters to discuss. Can you spare me some time? Eh, you want to talk with me? I thought you hated me. I'll be waiting in the courtroom in ten minutes. Well, that was strange. For some reason... I didn't get that sense of impending doom as he walked away this time. God, Chad is popping off. I'm yeah, very curious what's about to happen. <laughs> we go in and Barrack Van Zeeks is inside a burning carriage. Like, what? No! Ah! <laughs> the Enigma. Barrack Van Zeeks. What does he want to discuss, I wonder? The answer awaits in the courtroom, I suppose. Here goes, then. Is it cutscene? Surely it's cutscene. Oh, I might have to raise the volume. No? <laughs> it's still there. So, are you satisfied? You saved a guileless scientist from a great injustice. Um, yes! I think so. I'm relieved, at least, that the man's innocence could be proven. Anyway, I imagine you've been wondering where my animosity towards you Nipponese comes from. Oh, are you, are you going to tell us? I mean, I've been kind of, I've been kind of curious. Yes. I assumed it was the racism, but sure. Well. First I thought you did—you just didn't like me. I imagine you saw me as a pretentious child from an unimportant land who had no business being here. But now, I think differently. Well, don't, because <laughs> you were right the first time. You clearly know our ways, so I would guess that some specific incident led you, led you to your thorough dislike of my race. You tell me what happened, please. This better be fucking good, Van Zeeks. The Professor. I thought I'd never hear that name in this courtroom again, to be honest. He... he took your brother's life. Clint. <laughs> Don't laugh now! I'm so... I'm sorry, that I name know, is just I funny. Know, I know, I know. My brother was Clint Van Zeeks. Sixteen years ago, 
when I was still just in my teens. He was already the director of prosecutions and a key member of the judiciary. Oh, damn. I looked up to him. He was everything I aspired to be. He was involved in the establishment of justice systems in foreign countries as well. There were exchange programs between Britain and other nations then too, to share knowledge and ideas. As part of one of those programs, spelled the British way, three judicial students came to Britain from your homeland, the Empire of Japan. Oh! If it was 16 years ago, then one of them could have been my father. Did he come as a judicial team? Come on. Her dad was the professor. Her dad was the no. professor. He's always one of the three that came over, yeah. but not the professor. Of course. I remember Dr. Mikotaba well. I had no idea. I was a minor at the time. <laughs> Slaving away with my pickaxe training at the prosecutor's office. One day, Clint introduced me to the three visiting Nipponese. So, you've actually met with my father? He and his colleagues were polite and amicable. They were adept at their work and exacting in their standards. It was my first encounter with the Nipponese spirit and it made a very great impression upon me. But six years later, that's when it happened. The investigation was going nowhere. There were no suspects, even. Just an ever-growing list of victims. And in the end, my brother became one of them. The last, in fact, before the case was finally resolved. I'm... Great Ace Attorney Chronicles 2 resolved. I'm so sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. Truly. Clint was always ready to put his life on the line for justice anyway. So he wouldn't have wanted it any other way. He lost his life to the killer, but it was his victory in the end. From me personally, though, it was a great loss. I found myself in a very dark place indeed. When I finally found out the killer's identity, the reason why no one had been able to catch the man sooner ceased to be such a mystery. He'd been hiding in plain sight all the time. In plain sight? Are you aware of political events ten years ago? God damn it. It was a period of extremely sensitive diplomacy between the British and Japanese empires. A new treaty was being forged, I think. Correct. The Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation was being concluded. The leaders of both countries were deep in extensive political discussions. Which is why this particular killer's appearance in court was conducted at a cl as a closed trial. He's Japanese, yeah, okay. Yeah, 100%. Yes. yes. If the British public had known the identity of the killer, not only would the treaty have been in jeopardy, but our two nations could very well have ended up at war. What? A, a war? Between Britain and Japan? But that would mean... Oh my! You mean to say the professor was... Oh! Oh! Where is he going? Huh? Oh. I thought to myself, yes, it's time. Oh, is he gonna take the mask off? Time for you to come face to face with this hideous monster. I borrowed the key for the mask from the proprietress of the Waxwork Museum. So see for yourselves now. Confirm it with your own eyes. 
the truth that's been hidden this past decade. Who's it gonna be? Th that's the professor? Yes, that's him. Until now, the thought never even crossed my mind. That the mass murderer whose crimes shook Britain as never before. Was Japanese. He's just some guy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like. Yeah. That face. Oh. Oh. I feel as though I've seen it. It's a younger version of somebody. You, you, you okay? okay <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh, it's Kazuma. It's Joker <laughs> from Persona 5! <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Persona. <laughs> I had no idea! <laughs> Consider me very surprised! Kazuma Asogi. After a whole year, finally his memories return. As he stood there before me. I got a boner. <laughs> Are you <not> scared? <laughs> the, the, the fucking mouse looking at him is so funny. Well, you know, what the fuck's on your shoulder? Oh, it's adorable. Yeah, I regret the outfit for this scene. My friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's the point if we can't t if we can't <laughs> kill all the seriousness out of a scene? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very long road. Thank it's been 83 years. Thank you for guiding my friend here when I could not. It, it was an honor. No. I knew you wouldn't die that easily. Cosmo. <laughs> yes, you did. I mean, we buried you, so. We absolutely thought you were dead. You can't act like you've been holding on hope this entire time. In my absence. Give me my sword back. <laughs> I'll trade you. I have a cool sword too. Karuma. Great blade of the Asogi clan. Passed down through the generations. When we left Japan, this sword was at my friend's side. The Japanese man's katana is his soul, and he couldn't be parted from it. They couldn't help themselves oh. but say that fucking line. So, then, so Japanese, the so Japanese happened, men are like liches. Okay. It was Susato-san's wish that I inherit the sword, and I've kept it with me ever since, along with my memories of the friendship we shared. With this by my side. I always felt that you were watching over me somehow. Dual sword style. <laughs> I've made it at last. Father. Are you saying also like not? You mean you knew all this? Where's Van Zeeks? And also, would Van Zeeks not be like, "Yo, what the fuck? You're the son of the person who killed my brother." I, I, I did think it's kind of funny is that Van Zeeks like, "Well, this supposed to be my big moment, but ooh, my assistant had to completely upstage me." Is he gonna cut off his dad's head? This man steals property. Don't do it. Yeah. 
Yo! Ooh, anime! Anime as fuck! Oh, uh, is there something inside? There's another sword. <laughs> There's candy. He was a big pinata. Ryunosuke. We have much to talk about. I'll fucking say. But now is not the time. What? <laughs> the case is ending and Pridge has to go to bed. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Jumps out the window. <laughs> did, did he just leave? Well, that oh, was a lot. To, well, that was a lot to take in. Before he tripped Before over he another tripped cat. Over Wait, what? Oh, no, fuck. no, That's no, turn so off funny. autoplay. So he's living. Sorry. Oh, shit. That was really good, you guys. <laughs> fuck, that's <laughs> funny. Chipped over another cat and died. So, he's living the after image of the man who took my brother's life, is he? Yeah, how do you feel about that, dog? Cosmo Sogi. My best friend. Three months ago, when Lord Strongheart introduced us, I had an inkling that I would play Splatoon. Fuck you. LOL. There was something there. Some connection. But why did Lord Strongheart do that? Why did he make Cosima Lord Van Zeke's apprentice? And when he was suffering amnesia, too? The man was apprehended, even executed. But his legacy just won't die. That's the sad truth. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I thank you for meeting with me as I asked. So we cool now? Okay, he just left. <laughs> he just disappeared. Ten years ago, my grandmother took me to the railway station. The end. We were there to I meet wish. my father. <laughs> we were there to meet my father from the train. For me, it was the first time I'd ever seen him. Oh, Susato san. No. Oh, this is Susato. No, this is not time for your sad backstory. Too. Yeah, I know, right? Too. <laughs> too many sad backstories. I don't care. Oh, this is tied up with painful memories for her too. This isn't about you. She's never talked about this with me before, though. Yeah, I feel. I feel like we actually could have stopped and still had a whole episode. Yeah, I, I'm actually. This, this is actually dragging <laughs> now. It took time to adjust to having father around, but just when I was starting to get used to it. He called me into his study one day. He told me that a great friend of his had passed away in London, and that the friend had left behind a son, a boy seven years my senior. Father told me the boy had made a promise to his late father, so he was studying to become a defense lawyer. I wanted to help, so I studied to become a qualified judicial assistant. I'm sure you've worked out. That young man's name was Kazuma Asogi. Okay. Yeah, no shit. Yes, yes, I know. Shocking. I'm sure you didn't see that one She was coming. like Franklin. So you see... His name was Franklin. <laughs> Franklin the Turtle. So, you see, that's how he and I met. For a brief moment... My great friend had returned, only to disappear again all too soon. I mean, presumably he's not, like, he's gonna come back the next but case, in right? Encounter, something stirred. Something that had been dormant for a long time. <laughs> you about her? If great wheels had been set in motion, I could almost wheels hear them creaking into life. In some ways, it was the end of a chapter, but in many, it was the start of a Beginning new. of a boner. Stop! 
<laughs> I'm not doing this, chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, Salsa the Artist, very good. His mad dick stirred. Yep, very good. Oh! The, the mask demasking? Uh, right now I do want to say, two. before we, we, we end, it's glad to know that Cosmo's still alive. He's truly invincible. It's true. And with that, I have name dropped 13 Mark Wahlberg movies in this in this stream. Wow! Do you watch the Find them Holy all. shit, that's an incredible <laughs> challenge. That's an incredible <laughs> challenge. <laughs> wow. If you're okay, actually, that's incredible. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube and then you're in the comments down below, please go back. How many Mark movies did you and find yeah, all the time, Mark Wahlberg time stamp, movies? Time stamp the Mark Wahlberg yep, reference. Yep, that'll be an incredible way to, to up the engagement on the video. Uh, and speaking of, if you like this, you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash team and support us on patreon.com slash team. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, but until next time, court is adjourned. <laughs>